Cross soccer fans, this week all roads lead to Rome as the Capital Derby takes center stage. More late minute goals save big clubs and Italians vote on Ital Exit, plus lots of views and news. My name's Graziano, this is the Italian Soccer Attic Broadcast and you are where you need to be to get your fix. Buongiorno a tutti, welcome to the Italian Soccer Attic. Graz, great to be here. We start off with a question. There was a very important referendum vote last week in Italy. Graz, I want to know, did you vote yes or did you vote no? Jim Mike took the Switzerland approach and said maybe. Hmm. This week, all roads led to Rome for the Derby della Capitale. This ranks as one of the top derbies in the world with respect to animosity, ferocity, and bad behavior. These two sides just don't like each other. The Capital Derby has been played 164 times in Serie A, with Roma holding a 51 to 36 advantage over Lazio. Once again on Sunday, the Romans threw their cross-down cousins to the Lions and imposed their fifth consecutive victory. After a boring tactical first half, Roma's midfielders stole the show. First off, Kevin Strootman pressures Wallace, picks his pockets, and chips the goalie for a 1-0 lead in the 64th. A few minutes later, the other midfielder, Nyangolan, weaves through the opposition and fires a two-bouncer <laughs> past a sleeping Marchetti for a 2-0 victory. Yes, a typical derby. The ref whistled 35 stoppages, issued seven yellows and one red. Players fought and made racist comments. Ho oh, hum, another typical derby. Jim, after watching the Roma Derby, mm -hmm. uh, what's your analysis on why Lazio lost? Well, Lazio was hoping to have uh, the, the advantage with the speed of their wingers, Keita and Anderson. Uh, Roma responded with very speedy defenders, Perez, and Palmieri. And guess what? They did the job. Lazio was neutralized and Roma wins the game. You know what? I, I, I agree completely and also I think that Roma's midfielders finally came to play. Uh, injured player Strootman was back in form after missing two years. He had the game of his life. And also uh, back in form, Knight Anglan had a great game. He won most of his challenges and had five tackle takeaways. Uh, strength up the middle, one for Roma today. Juve, who haven't lost at home for 23 games, hosted Red Hot Italanta, who were on a seven game winning streak. Something had to give, and it did, when Juventus showed Atlanta why they're the best team in Italy. Two quick goals by Sandro in the 15th and by Rugani in the 19th took the fight up at Atlanta and set the stage for a 3-1 no contest victory. Juve's victory told Atalanta that there would be no Italian version of Leicester City as far as they're concerned. Napoli got back to win by scoring two quick goals before Inter even had time to warm up. Zelinski in the second and Hamsik in the fifth shocked the visitors and set the stage for a 3-0 victory. Inter showed new coach Pioli why old coach De Boer got canned. They have no defense. Milan, playing at home against Crotone, gave up an early goal to Falcinelli in the 26th, but tied it in the 41st on a classic goal. Against a stubborn Crotone side, Milan was looking at a prospect of an at-home tie after Niang missed the penalty. But late heroics from Lampadula in the 86th gave Milan the victory. Ilampo is lightning. Also scoring a late steal at home victory was Fiorentina facing Palermo with new coach Corini. Babacar's goal in the 93rd minute gave Fiorentina the 2-1 victory and proved that Palermo's problems are not the coaching staff. Other games saw Pescara earn a point against Cagliari also with a goal in the 92nd by Caprari. 
Sampdoria brought Torino down back to earth with a 2-0 victory at home and Sassuolo finally got back to winning by putting three by Empoli. On Monday, Chievo faces Genoa and Udine plays Bologna. My goal of the day comes from the Derby. Kevin Strootman, the lavatrice, <laughs> washing machine in Italian, cleans up a messy touch by the defender Wallace and then hangs the goalie out to dry. Wash cycle complete. <laughs> First, it was Leicester City at 5,000 to 1 winning the EPL. Then Portugal followed up with a first ever win at the European Championship. Then came the Chicago Cubs who hadn't won in 109 years. But that's not the end of the craziness. In Canada, the Toronto FC, home of former Juve star Jovinko, they are playing in the MLS final for the first time ever. But look at what's happening in Europe. In France, you have OGC Nice in first place above billionaire-backed Paris Saint-Germain. If they continue to win, their names will go from OGC to OMG Nice. In Germany, newly promoted RB Leipzig, who is owned by drink maker Red Bull, is in first place ahead of star-studded Bayern Munich. Red Bull has given this team wings. And in the Turkish Super League, you have new boys Bazakşehir in first place. This from a team that last year in one home game only got 100 spectators. Wow, all to say in this sports year. Leicester City may not be just a one-off. Cha-ching, cha-ching. If you have a couple of extra lira to spare, I think you should place it somewhere. Jim, did yes. you know that Palermo hitman Zamperini, Zamperini did it again? He fired yet another coach. Wow. Ciao, Di Zebrio and hello, Corini. It's his 11th coach in 12 months and 49th in 14 years. To wow. quote, you know whom, Jim, what happened? Well, uh, he must have watched a lot of reality TV. You're fired. Now, Brad, do you know that the oldest living female on earth is an Italian by the name of Emma Morano? She's 117 years old. And do you know what her secret is to her longevity? No. Well, according to her, it's living alone. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I'll share that with my wife. And finally, Italians followed the world's move to populism by voting no to Renzi's constitutional reforms thus bringing down the government again. <laughs> Think of this coincidence. Zamperini has had 49 coaches and Italy has had 49 governments. You think there's a coincidence there? Jim, what's this all mean? Well, this means, Graz, that if you want to have a long life in Italy, number one, do not coach Palermo. Number two, stay out of Italian politics. That's it. Thanks for watching. Ciao next week. Chin chin. Buonasera. Yeah.